So I don't know about those of you watching, but I for sure know that there have been more days than I can count when I've been woken up by a chorus of birds singing their little hearts out at sunrise. And I've always wondered, why do they all start singing at the same time? It's almost like they're performing some kind of morning jam session, right? But what's the science behind that? Today, we're going to dive into that mystery of the dawn chorus and why birds sing at dawn and what it really means. And of course, to help us out with this, we have my husband, resident bird stud and birder, Dustin here. Um, Dustin, before we get into why birds even sing at dawn, can you explain what the dawn chorus actually is and which birds participate in it? Because it's not all birds, right? That's right. So the dawn chorus is a period of intense bird singing, a cacophony, if you will, that occurs just before to just after sunrise, roughly an hour before to an hour after, but it can continue several hours later, depending on the time of year as well. And you're right, not all birds sing in the dawn chorus. Mainly it's songbirds like robins, which are in the thrush family, the other thrushes, warblers, and sparrows. Some species, like the European robin, even sing if there's artificial light nearby. Why do birds sing so much in particular at dawn? Is it, is it just because they've just woken up, so they've got lots of energy? Like our dogs are like fired up and super rambunctious in the mornings because they've got all this energy they've been building all night while they've been sleeping? Is, is that what's going on? There's some of that, but the early bird theory applies here. Um, and there's advantages to being first. So one of the main reasons birds sing at dawn is to defend their territory. At this time of day, the air is cooler and calmer, making their, the sound of their song travel farther. And it's simply the perfect time to announce ownership of the area before anyone else does. Studies have shown that birds who sing more consistently at dawn are also better at holding on to that territory. And if you hold on to a territory, it means you might be more successful with the ladies. Ah, I see. So for male birds, singing at dawn is about impressing the female. So a strong, complex song signals to a female that he's healthy and has good genes. Some studies suggest that females prefer males who start singing earlier because it shows their stamina and their experience, which are key success factors to breeding for birds. I have to say, as a human lady, I'm glad you didn't take that approach to wooing me <laughs> back in the day, because having you singing your little heart out at 5 a.m., I, I don't know if that would have done it. Well, it's never too late. <laughs> <laughs> but birds wake up cold and hungry after a long night. Singing helps them warm up their muscles, get acclimated to the day before they get out searching for food. And oftentimes you see birds, what's called tree topping, sitting up on the very tippity topmost branch of a tree, just singing their heart out. And I wonder if they're up there just so that they can project as far as possible, or maybe they're trying to get up into the sunlight and absorb that, those first early morning rays to warm themselves up. Maybe, or maybe they're just practicing for American Idol. I don't know. Okay, so this all makes sense, um, but how do they know to start singing at that time of day? Is it is it just because the sun's coming up? Like, what what kind of triggers it? It's a good question, because some places where birds are up and singing, it's essentially daylight all day long up in the Arctic, so it's not oh. just the changing of the light. Birds have internal clocks or circadian rhythms, just like humans do, and they're influenced by light. So at dawn, even small increases in the light levels, even if it wasn't dark at night, the increase is something that they do key off of, and it signals their brains it's time to sing. And they have a hormone called melatonin that regulates their sleep, similar to people, and decreases at dawn, which helps birds wake up and they get started vocalizing. I have melatonin on my nightstand right now. <laughs> okay. All right. So... Did they hope they didn't squeeze it out of birds? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. That's awful. Why would you say that? What kind of birder are you? Anyways, all right. So you've got birds that sing at dawn. Not all of them, but some of them. But when we started this discussion, I asked you to kind of confirm that not all birds do this, and you said that's correct. So what about birds that, are there birds that sing at night? There are. So 
some of them have it in their name, like nightingales and mockingbirds are notorious for singing at night, um, especially in urban areas or places where artificial light is present um, all night long. That can kind of uh, confuse their internal clocks a little bit. And owls, of course, are made to live and be active during the night. So they call all night also about territory and communication. Um, And lots of birds also migrate at night. So although it might not technically be their singing, their flight calls while they're migrating overhead during the night can be used by advanced birders to even identify the species that are passing overhead during the migration season. But we'll talk about that later. Why do you think birds evolved to sing at dawn in the first place? Do you have any theories on that? Singing is their dating app. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, how many people are using their dating app at five o'clock in the morning? (laughs) Actually, I shouldn't ask. Like, I don't know. I know nothing about dating apps. So, (laughs) me either. (laughs) It's all about improving their access, their odds, and their success with a mate. So, singing at dawn likely evolved because it's a time when predators are less active giving birds a safer way to communicate. And it's a time when females might also be just waking up and it's a good way to get their attention even from afar. And uh, the females are sort of more receptive to mating calls at this time. So it makes it a strategic time for them to sing. And interestingly, some uh, studies into birdsong during the COVID era showed that when human activity was greatly reduced while we were all staying home, particularly in those first two weeks of lockdown, mm-hmm the ambient noise in the environment was reduced and birds actually started to sing more away from dawn when there was less noise pollution and competition. So partly it might just be that they're singing at dawn because it's quiet and it's the quietest time and therefore the most effective for them. So they have to get up so early because of us. It's our fault. In urban environments and even some suburban environments, sure, but there's lots of places where they're not impacted by that. But it does go to show that noise pollution isn't just something that annoys your neighbor. That's kind of a bummer. I feel a little guilty about that. But okay, Um, so now we understand what the dawn chorus is and kind of why it happens. It seems pretty straightforward. Um, Is that all there is to that story? Are there any other amazing, like, fun facts that you want to drop on us in this episode about the Dawn dawn Chorus? I could do this for a week. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, but interestingly, birds um, of the same species don't all sound sound alike. They have accents and regional dialects just like people do. So a robin in New York might sound slightly different than an American robin in California. And song sparrows are particularly regional in that way. Um, so just because you hear what kind of sounds like a song sparrow, if you're not where you, in a place where you're from, it might be the song sparrow you're used to just sounding differently. Um, young birds learn their songs by listening um, to other adults. And dawn is the best time to practice because there's less background noise and they can hear the other males of their species singing clearly. So it's a good time to learn also. And if a young bird doesn't learn its song during this period, it may not develop a proper song. And that might mean um, that it doesn't develop it this year and has a whole year of practice so that it has a chance at breeding. I thought you were going to say that means it turns into a rap artist. (laughs) Not that rap isn't a proper song. I like rap, but like, (laughs) or they become beatboxers or whatever. (laughs) Um, So birds start singing earlier on clear mornings than on cloudy days because light levels play a big role in triggering them to start their songs. And like mockingbirds and starlings, um, even some thrushes can mimic other bird songs and sometimes even car alarms or human sounds. So there's really a strong instinct for them to learn the songs around them so that they can defend that territory. And sometimes they get fooled into defending another bird's territory or kind of mimicking all the other birds so that all the other birds avoid that territory, leaving it just for them. What I think is super interesting, maybe it's a little dorky, but birds can even hear at different speeds than humans do. So if you're familiar with the song of a wood thrush or a hermit thrush, it kind of comes in three parts and it sounds like really fast and high pitched and stuff. Um, But we know birds actually hear that in a much slower, more precise manner and those notes embedded in the tune that we can't really even break out they're hearing almost in slow motion and so the fidelity of their song is 
really precise for those species. That's amazing. I wonder what our music sounds like to them. I don't know. Because it must sound different to them if they have that capability, right? Yeah, I think, I think animals just experience the world in different ways. Just huh. like you see a bird flit into the bushes and you think their eyesight must be super keen to be able to go back and forth really quickly, their hearing has the same kind of agility. That's really neat. Okay, so to recap, birds sing at dawn. It's mainly to defend their territories and attract their mates um, and maybe to warm up for the day a little bit. And what else? Like they pick that time of day because the air is calm. It's a little more quiet. Their song can carry a little bit farther. There's less competition from all the noisy humans in the world. And that's kind of why they've decided that's a perfect time of day to communicate. Um, okay. Um, I wonder from our viewers, what do you notice about the dawn chorus where you live? Are there particular birds that you feel are competing better with their song in the early morning than others? I can tell you I hear those blue jays for sure. Um, and yeah, what birds do you hear the most in your areas and which ones are your favorite? Mine is the morning dove. Do you have a favorite well, cardinals are on my mind because uh, it's early March here, but, well, it's early March everywhere, but it's early March at the moment. Um, about two weeks ago on February 22nd, I noticed the sound of cardinals singing for the first time, and it was sort of, it felt like opening the curtain to spring. You heard that first mating call of any bird. So do you have any species that you've been noticing lately or that you associate with the dawn chorus? Let us know. And for those of you watching, if you have any questions that you'd like us to address in our question of the week series in the future, drop them in the comments and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when we've researched your upcoming discussion topic. So that is all for today's episode. But before we head off on our next adventure, this is just a quick reminder from us to you that you can find Dustin's wildlife photography and links to all of our content channels on our website, hikeandhearth.com. And we love being a part of the YouTube nature community. So keep sharing your comments and your experiences with us on nature, wildlife, and conservation. And if you're not already subscribed, be sure to join us. Absolutely. Yeah, we love the comments and chatting with you guys. It's a lot of fun. And if you are on Substack, we did just start a newsletter, Nature Notes with Hike and Hearth, so we can expand on some of the topics we cover here on the vodcast. Okay, Dustin, are you ready to sign us off for the day? I sure am. Until next time, friends, keep your eyes in the skies and your hearts in the wild. Bye, everyone.